we all might need to export animations for our project. And Inkscape has made it not only easy but super fast. So let's see how we can export animations with Inkscape. This is a project that I have modeled a few years ago and as you can see it has a lot of Inkscape objects. Also I have created all of the materials before and now we are going to just focus on creating animations. Now go to Inkscape tab and start it. First of all we are going to set the view and perspective. Just go to the view that you like the most for now. And after that, I'm going to change the environment. So if you press shift and right click, you can change the sky and go from night to day. And also if you want to change the position of the sun for shadows and the angle of lighting, you can use U and I. You can press shift with them to slow it down a little bit and control it better. Now in top right corner, we have visual setting and in here we have a few tabs. I am not going to talk about all of the details in here, just the one that we are going to use in this animation. In atmosphere tab, we have the wind in here. It's important to put its intensity on a reasonable number because if you increase it too much, the trees and the water will go crazy. Usually, I put it on 10 or 20 percent. Next, in sky tab, we have the clouds so you can control the density and variety of the clouds in here. So I don't want that much density in here. I need some smaller clouds and also less variety. So this is better for me. At the end, we have the output section. So in here, you need to set the size of your render. So we have Full HD, HD and Ultra HD. If you are going to take test render, make sure it's on lower sizes. But for final render, you can go with Ultra HD or put it on custom and go beyond that. And about this image section, this part is only for renders. For the videos we have here, which we are going to have it again when we press export on video creation tab. But I'm going to explain it in here. Compression quality means that the quality that you want to export your videos. So along with the size of your video, you can set this part too. We have maximum Blu-ray web and lossless, which you can use according to your needs. And then in here we have frames per second. These numbers in here means that, for example, if we have like 5 seconds, we're going to have 30 frames per 5 seconds. So it means that 30 times 5. And this is going to make our video smoother and sometimes it will increase the quality. But for architecture animations, I don't think we need to go beyond these two numbers. Usually 25, 20 and 30 is okay. Now let me change the resolution to HD and let's go to video editor. So in here we have a few options but first of all we are going to create a frame. To create your first frame you can click on this part or in here. So I'm going to click on it here and you can see a triangle in this part. So if you click on it you will have a little bit more options. In this part you can see the number of the frame. So we are on the first frame that you have created for this path. And if you want to add another one, you can click on this part. We have another triangle in here, which if I click on it, you can see it's the second frame. And if you want to add more, you can click on this part in the center. So now we have three frames, three different parts, which we can control separately. Now we have timeline active. In this part, you can set the duration of the video. So you can go from 23 hours to only five seconds. I'm going to set it on 5 seconds for now and in this part you can check this show grid line to control the viewport to control the perspective of your video and for the movement we have two options. I'm going to explain about these two sections in a few seconds. Now how creating animation actually works. So if you click on the first frame you will have a little bit more option. Also you can change anything in here if you want. 
In this part, we have the time of day, so you can control the lighting, the sun position, and the time of it. I'm not going to change this option because this atmosphere is what I want for my entire video. And then in here, we have the focal point. If you check it, you can control it the way you want. So you can go full blur like this, which is really good for starting the video or you can like have clear perfect view like this one and you can animate it actually so for this first frame i'm going to go with full blur like this and then you can change it for the second or the last frame so i'm going to click on this second frame you can see that the second frame is selected in here check the focal point and like increase it to whatever number that you want I'm going to go with something like this. Now I am going to go out of this keyframe section and I'm going to see the preview. You can see the trees are moving and we go from full blur to clear views like this. I think it's really amazing. Now if you want to add a little bit movement to your camera but not that complete rotation of the camera, you can check this shaky camera in here and if I click on preview again you will see the smooth shaking and the smooth movements during this timeline. So another option that we have in frames section is build up view. If you click on one of the frames, for example this one or maybe the next frame, you can jump into the next keyframe with these two icons in here. I'm going to click on it and now we are in the second frame. In this part, you can check the build up view like this and you can kind of zoom in and zoom out and give depth to your view. So it's a really cool option. I'm going to check it on the second frame to the last frame let's keep it on this number for the second frame and for the third frame I am going to check the field of view without any focal point and then I am going to zoom in like this now if you click on the preview you can see how all of these together works You saw that from second frame to the last frame it was real quick. This is because the second frame is between these parts. It's not exactly in the middle of the video. But how we can fix it? When we have more than two frames in our video, for the frame that is in the middle, we can use the timestamp option. So you just need to check it and set it on the frame or timeline that you want. In here, I'm going to put it in the center like this. Well, it's better. Just keep this in mind that when you are working with all of these options, before exporting the video, check the timeline and timestamps again because they might change a little bit. Now, if you want to export this 5 second video, you can click on this export in here. You can see the resolution, compression quality and frames per second that I have talked before. And after that, if you set all of these on whatever that you want, you can click on export and assign a name and address for your video and then just simply save it and wait for the render to be complete. Now, what if you want to create another pass in another perspective for this project and we also want to keep all of these settings. So for this, you can click on this part and save this path to a file, for example, next to the file of this project and you can use it anytime that you want. From this part, you can save this path and then if you want to use it again, you can come to this view editor section and then load that path. And for creating another pass, you can either delete all of these frames and start from the beginning or you can create a new video pass like we are going to create one in here. If you didn't save the pass, you will see this warning in here asks if you want to really delete the path. I'm going to click on yes and now you can see we have another video pass with no frames. So to start again, I'm going to create two frames like this. Before changing any view, I am going to set the duration on 7 seconds. And then for the first frame, I am going to start from this part. But for the last frame, 
we are going to have only two frames in here i am going to go to the second frame and then i am going to move a little bit to this part now we need to update the camera with this icon in here because we changed the position of the camera i'm going to click on this part and then if i click on the preview we can see the animation perfect now you just need to export this video exactly like we did for the previous one and after you render all of the videos you are going to use another software for like editing them something like premiere and you probably need to add some music or some text next to some parts be creative and look at your project from different angles think about the lighting the material and most important the scenario behind the animation and i'm sure you will create a stunning videos so this is the final result of our animation and i really hope you enjoyed it